All right, today we're going to look at some geometry topics that we want to review before the ACT and MCA tests. Notice I've highlighted, it says to leave all irrational answers in simplest radical form or in terms of pi. So we're not going to convert pi to a decimal. We're not going to convert, say, the square root of 7 to a decimal. We're just going to leave it like that. In our first question, it says if arc AB is 80 degrees, and arc BC is 60 degrees, with center O, find the degree measure of angle CAO. So that's this little angle there, all right? So looking at the 80 degree arc, it has the same measure as the central angle. So we know that this angle is also 80 degrees. Same reasoning gets us this angle being 60 degrees. So if we look at now triangle CAO, sorry, COA, um, we have a triangle that has the largest angle split into the two parts, the 60 and the 80. That adds up to a total of 140 degrees. And we know that in a triangle, all the angles add up to 180. We also know that based on our original picture, Segment OA and OC are both radii of the circle, so they are equivalent in length. So we have an isosceles triangle, and we know that in an isosceles triangle, our base angles are equivalent. So if the two sides I've marked with R are equal in length, then these two angles have to be the same. If it all adds up to 180 degrees, we've used up 140 for the large top angle there, and we are now left with 40 degrees that we have to split equally in our two base angles. So that means each of our base angles here are going to be 20 degrees. So to answer their question, the measure of angle CAO would be 20 degrees. All right, in our second problem, we have two triangles. The first one, again, is an isosceles triangle. I know that because they've indicated that both of those um, have the same measurement. So since we know this angle is 90 degrees, we must have a 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree triangle. So if you remember some things from geometry about 45, 45, 90 triangles, we know that the two legs are equivalent. So we know that this bottom leg here has to also be 8 root 2 since our vertical leg there was 8 root 2. And then we know that Pythagorean theorem says we can multiply the squares of the two, or sorry, we can add the squares of the two sides to get the square of the third side. So we could go through this 8 root 2 squared plus 8 root 2 squared has to equal our last side squared. When we square 8 root 2, we square the 8, which gets us 64. We square root 2, which gets us root 4, which is 2. 64 times 2 would be 128. Same thing here. So c squared is going to be 256. And then we can square root that, and we get a value of 16. Okay. If you remembered things about your 45, 45, 90 triangles, we know that the hypotenuse, or the long side there, is going to be the short leg times root 2. So our short leg, which is 8 root 2, times another root 2. All right, so in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, we have x, x, and we have x root 2. Well, 8 root 2 times root 2 is 8 root 4 which is 8 times 2, or 16. So we're getting the same answer either way of looking at it. Whatever is going to give you a faster route um, when you're taking the ACT. The second triangle, again, we have a right triangle. One angle is measured uh, 30 degrees, which means this would have to be a 60-degree angle. So now we're talking about a 30-60-90 triangle. And if you remember um, from geometry, the short leg if we call the short leg x, which would be the side opposite the smallest angle, the hypotenuse is 2 times that, and the long leg is x times 
root 3. So we know that this long leg here, this 12, has to equal 2x, which means x would have to be a 6. So my short leg here is going to be 6. My longer leg is going to be 6 root 3, and then the hypotenuse would be 12. In question 3, notice the notation here tells me that I have parallel lines. So I'm going to start with the bottom section here because I know an angle that is tied to one of my parallel lines. In the top triangle, I know that very top angle is 35 degrees, but it doesn't really help me with these because I don't know for sure that it's an isosceles triangle. So let's start with what we do know. We have this bottom angle here is 110 degrees. From geometry, we remember that vertical angles are equivalent. So if that's 110, this is also 110 degrees. We also know that two angles that form a line are supplementary, and so they have to add up to 180. So if we have 110 used up, that means this other one would have to be 70 degrees. And now we have another case of vertical angles, so this would also be 70 degrees. And once we know that, we can kind of work our way all the way around our, our figure here. This angle and this one are called alternate interior, and they are equivalent, so this would have to be 70 degrees. We have supplementary angles, which means this is 110. We have vertical angles, which makes this 110. And again, another pair of vertical angles makes that 70. So we've kind of filled in the whole right side of our figure. Now looking at that top triangle, we found this to be 70 degrees. We were told this top one was 35 degrees. That adds up to 105 degrees. And we know that they have to add up to 180 total. So our missing one must be 75 degrees. So we know this is 75. And then going through vertical and supplementary angles again, we know this is 75. Supplementary to that would be 105. And then working our way down to the last uh, intersection here, Alternate interior, 75 there. We have 75 here. Vertical makes this 75, either using supplementary or, again, alternate interior. We know that these are 105. All right. Question four says, how far apart are the points? We're given coordinates for two different points. And we're looking for distance. So we need to remember our distance formula. x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Add those together and square root the whole thing. So plugging in our values. Our x's are the first coordinates in each pair. So we have negative 2 minus 4, quantity squared. Our y coordinates are the second coordinate in each pair, so 3 minus 7. And again, it doesn't matter if you do 3 minus 7, 7 minus 3. We're going to square them. So negative 2 minus 4 would be negative 6. Squared would be 36. In the second one, 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Squared would be 16. Adding those together, we get the square root of 52. We can simplify that. They told us they wanted simplified radical form. So 52 is the same as 4 times 13. So we could square root the two pieces and get 2 root 13 as our simplified distance. Question 5 says, find where the point 2, negative 5 would be after each of the listed transformations. So let's picture. Um, let's actually, I'm going to grab a new sheet here and get a graph. All right. So the first one says we take 2, negative 5. Sorry for that interruption. I had someone at my door. All right, let's start over. Um, we have the point 2, negative 5, and we want to reflect it across the y-axis. So that means it's going to move 
the same distance this direction. So my coordinates would be negative 2, negative 5. Okay, part B says we're going to reflect it across the x-axis. So same idea. We're going to take our blue dot. It's five places below the axis, so we're going to go five places above the axis. And we end up with coordinates 2, 5. Part C says it's reflected across the line y equals x. So your line y equals x cuts your coordinate plane diagonally. So if we're going to reflect it across that, we really have our y and x is getting flip-flopped. So we're going to end up at, instead of 2, negative 5, we're going to end up at negative 5, positive 2. All right. And if you look at the distance, the perpendicular distance from there to there, it would be the same distance. All right. So part C, reflecting across y equals x, our coordinates just flip-flop. Rotating 180 degrees about negative 4, 6. All right, I'm going to take this stuff out here for a sec. All right, there's my starting point. It says rotate 180 degrees around the point negative 4, 6. All right, so we want to rotate 180 degrees around there. Picture connecting these, okay? And let's picture a triangle. So the distance from here to my original point is 6. The distance from the red dot up to this top red dot is 11. All right, so again, distance between our x's is 6, distance between our y's is 11. If we rotate 180 degrees, we are taking this point and we are trying to spin it all the way around to up there, 180 degree spin around this point. So build your triangle again. We know that the vertical distance was 11, so our vertical distance there is going to be 11. We know our horizontal distance was 6, so we're 6 going in the horizontal direction. And if we compare from our point four, six, negative 4, 6, we want to move 6 spaces this way. So we're going to be at negative 10. And we want to move 11 spaces up from that 6, so we're going to be at 17. So we're going to land at negative 10, 17. And the fifth one says we're going to rotate the point 90 degrees clockwise around the origin. All right. So rotating around the origin 90 degrees. Again, let's picture a triangle. And we want to take that triangle and rotate it counterclockwise. So going back up, the vertical length is now going to become my horizontal length. And the horizontal length is now going to become my vertical length. Okay, So that triangle is just getting rotated up. All right, and we land, sorry, let's try this again. There's my original point. All right, this will be clear. Okay, so we have that triangle. We're going to rotate it up 90 degrees, and we end up with that triangle. So my new point that I land in would be here at positive 5, 2. All right, let's go back to where we left off here. All right, for question six, it says the perimeter of a square is 60 inches. And it's a square, so we know all the sides are the same. 
So each side would have to be 15 for us to get a perimeter of 60. It says, if the side length of the square is doubled, what is the new area? So my new square has a side length that's twice as big, which means they are going to be 30 inches on a side. And it says, what is the area, not perimeter, but what is the area of this new square? Area is the side length squared. And if our side length is 30, our area would be 30 squared or 900. Since it was inches, this would be square inches. Question 7 says, find the diameter of a circle whose area is 30 pi meters squared. Area of a circle formula is pi r squared. And we're told the area is 30 pi. All right, now, since both sides of that equation have pi, we can divide it out. And we end up with 30 equals r squared. Square rooting that, our radius would be the square root of 30. Now, they asked us for the diameter. So really watch the wording on these questions. They asked for diameter. Diameter is just two radii put together. So our diameter is going to be 2 times the square root of 30. And it was measured in meters. Question 8. So the hypotenuse of a right triangle is 182 feet, and the shorter side is 840 inches. Again, notice that they have different measurements. So it says the hypotenuse is 182 feet. Hypotenuse is always opposite your right angle. Um, the shorter side is 840 inches. So we're going to have to do some converting, either into inches to feet, feet to inches. There are 12 inches in a foot, so if we take 840 divided by 12, we end up with 70. So 840 inches is the same as 70 feet. Find the length of the longer leg in yards. Well, we're first going to find it in feet, and then we can work and figure out our yards. So again, talking about that Pythagorean theorem, our two legs squared, so 70 squared and this unknown longer leg squared, has to equal the hypotenuse squared. Okay, 70 squared is going to have to get subtracted to the other side. And if you take your calculator, 182 squared minus 70 squared leaves us with 28,224. And when we square root that, we get 168 feet. But they asked for our answer to be in yards. And there's three feet in every yard. So if we take 168 divided by three, we end up with 56 yards. Then the second part says find the area of the triangle. Area is 1 half base times height. In our figure, we just figured out our base was 168 feet and our height is 70 feet. So our area is going to be 1 half 70 times 168, which ends up being 5,880 square feet. Now, if you wanted to convert that to yards, Every foot is three yards, and feet squared means we have feet, three feet is the same as one yard. So the area would be nine square feet being equivalent to one square yard. So we could take this answer, divide it by nine to get square yards. It ends up being about 653 and a third square yards. They didn't specify which units to use, so either answer would have been okay. All right, question nine. Find the perimeter and the area of the given shape. All angles that appear to be right angles are considered 90 degrees. So we can think of this as basically two rectangles. 
our first rectangle has a side that is 12 and a side that is 8. So we could find the area of that. Okay. And our second rectangle has a side that is 12 meters. We have to figure out this one. But we can find that side because we know the whole thing here is 19. And we've used up 12 for that portion. So that makes this side have to be 7 meters. So the second part has an area of 12 times 7, or 84. If we add those together, our total area would be 180. All right, now for perimeter, we've labeled most of the sides. This side right here, again, the whole thing is 12. We've used up 8 here, which makes that have to be a 4. So if we start working our way around from here, we've got 12 plus 8 plus 19 plus 12 plus 7 plus 4. All right, so adding those all up. 12, 8, 19, another 12, 7, and 4. Our perimeter would add up to 62 meters. All right, question 10. It says triangle ABC is similar. Remember that little um, squiggle notation there is a similarity notation. So it is similar to triangle DEF. In similar figures, you have equivalent angles, but the sides are proportional. It says they're both isosceles. Find the missing sides and angles. So looking at our first one. If it's isosceles, 118 has to be the single angle because we can't have two 118 degree angles in one triangle. They only add up to 180 total. That means these two angles are going to have to be equivalent, which means these two sides have to be equivalent. So our missing side there would have to be 7. And if we take 180, subtract off the 118 that we've already used up, we have 62 degrees left to split into the two base angles. So each base angle is going to be 31 degrees. In this picture, we have a similar shape. It is turned on its side, but our angles have to match. So we are going to have 118 degrees here, since angle E has to match with angle B. Angles A and C have to match with angles D and F, so these have to be 31 degrees. And then we know that the sides have to be pro proportional. So I'm just going to call these two both x since it's isosceles. So we can say that x, the short leg, is to 18, the longer side, has to match the same ratio in that first triangle. The short leg is 7 to the longer one of 12. Setting up our proportion, we can cross multiply. We've got 12x equals 18 times. 7, and then we can divide by 12. So 18 times 7 divided by 12, grab your calculators, you should get 10.5. So our two missing side lengths here are 